Hello everybody, my name is Gabor Mesaros and this is Genomics Bootcamp where we speak about genomics from the beginner's perspective. Today is an exciting day because today we have another longer video with a workflow, a full workflow on the FST analysis. So the FSTs or the fixation index is a very interesting and useful statistic when it comes to genomics, especially if you want to compare two populations. So, uh, well, based on this uh, statistic and the FST index, you can use them as a follow-up uh, in a selection signature study, or well, these are, could be used as selection signatures, or you can use them uh, in a follow-up admixture studies. Today's video is also, well, a bit of a special from two other reasons. One is that I will leave you with a small uh, computational challenge, or well, basically a bit of a coding challenge. Uh, at the end of this video and there is an additional video on the dangers that you might encounter when you are dealing with FST values or when you, want, when you want to find out the FST values of the two populations but more on that at the end of the video. So for now, well, let's go and see how it is done. Here we are in R again to do the FST analysis, that is the fixation index for population differentiation for each of the SNPs between the two selected populations. The FSTs will be computed by Pling for each, lo each loci according to the Ware and Cockerham method 1984 as it is, is documented in Pling. The start of the script is uh, rather straightforward. So we do the clearing of the workspace as usual and setting of the working directory as usual. Of course, this is my working directory. You need to set it uh, the same as you have it, have the data in your computer. So we, we, we will use uh, the two packages in this uh, script. One of them is tidyverse and the other one is a new package called qqman. Well, it's not new in a sense that it is created uh, recently, but uh, new in a sense that we haven't used it in the channel yet. So it, this will be used to create a very neat uh, Manhattan plot at the end of the script. So basically to, to show or visualize the, res the results in a quick way. So uh, don't worry about this uh, improvement challenge right now. I will return to it at the end of the video. Now, what we need to do is, um, well, select two populations uh, for our FST uh, comparisons or creating the F or computing the FST because FST is by definition, uh, well, comparing two populations in terms of uh, frequencies or allele frequencies. For that, we will use the plink again from the full data and the dash dash keep thumb statement as was detailed in a previous video. So we will use uh, the dash dash keep thumb and the text file breed1.txt and breed2.txt. This is how the text files look like. So you see that this is just the family file name for a breed. Uh, one, this one breed is the Angora goats. And well, this did actually the Angora goats are quite interesting because of the mohair hair type that they are producing. And the other one I selected is the Gumus goats and a native breed from Ethiopia. And this is how the two breeds uh, look like the Angora goat and the Gumus goat. So we will continue with the quality control and here I would underline that the quality control must be done for the two breeds separately and also that we should not use MUF and we will be very careful with Hardy-Weinberg so we definitely should not do the quality control for the two breeds uh, together. For the reasons for this uh, are explained in the accompanying video to this where I demonstrate what happens if uh, you are a little bit careless with the uh, QC and how you can actually delete the very results you are looking for. So, well, I will link that video also uh, to, this, uh, to this video. So it should be on the top of the screen and also at the end of this, this video. So it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, to look at for sure. Anyway, for now we do a fairly standard quality control for breed one, 
we take uh, the autosome and uh, delete anything, any animal that is more than 10% missing. So the missingness per SNP is more than 10% uh, and also the missingness per animal is more than 10%. And also we are deleting SNPs that within breed does not adhere to the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium rules. And at the end, we create a, a breed one QC and breed two QC uh, output files. The next step is merging. So we need to merge the two files together. At the time of the making of this video, there is no separate uh, mer video on merging, data merging with Plink, but I plan to do that. So when it's done, then uh, it will be linked uh, also, also to this video. But uh, for now, we are okay with a short description that basically we are using the input file as read one QC, and then we use the dash dash B merge statement with the second file that we want to uh, well, just merge together. We use dash dash B merge because we are dealing with binary pet files. And at the end, we make a new pet file with the name input for FST. So, and uh, with a lot of explanation, I forgot to actually run the script lines so that you can actually see what is happening. So I will do that now and we will follow up uh, and highlight the most important uh, things that happen. So the first one is the extraction of the first breed, Angora goats 413. So there is a number of Angora goats actually from multiple countries and uh, we have uh, 53,000 uh, well, SNPs remaining. The second breed is the Gumus goats. There is 41 of them. And also, well, we don't do any quality control at this point. So after the quality control, we see that, uh, well, we remove uh, about uh, 46 goats because of the missingness and uh, about uh, a bit more than 1,000, well, 1,500 because of uh, various reasons of missingness or Hardy-Weinberg. And after keeping just the autosomal genome, we are ending up with 48,000 SNPs and 367 animals. For breed two, so this is the Gumus goats. So we have about a thousand SNPs, uh, well, most of the, those ones with, for missingness. And well, we didn't uh, exclude any animals. So we are also ending up with about 49,000 SNPs. The next step was the merging where we actually have the input from the two, from the two data sets from the Angora and the Gumus and also for the two different uh, SNP sets. So what the merging does is, uh, well, it joins the animals uh, together and also the markers together so we end up with uh, well, 408 uh, goats and uh, about uh, 49,000 variants. Now, in this case, uh, there is a, a bit of a, a strange thing happening that uh, apparently in the two map files, there are SNPs that are called differently, but apparently they have the same chromosome and position. I don't think this is a huge deal, but uh, just to be on a safe side, we can deal with this in the follow-up lines. And uh, what we do is actually we use the capacities of Plink for this. So with the list duplicate variables, we actually create a, an output file with the names of the duplicated SNPs. So this is the list duplicate bars file and the output file for this or output name is also input for FST. So we run this and uh, well, there is a file created. So you see here the list of duplicate variables report written to input for FST dupvar. So this is how it looks like. You see that one of the, from the each uh, SNP pair is listed here. And we will use this uh, list of SNPs as explained in a previous video with the dash dash exclude statement. So we will remove these ones from the data set. So you see that we started with, uh, well, 49,315 variants and uh, we excluded just these three variants and ended up with 49,312 variants.
So the next thing to do is the actual FST computation with the now input for FST duplication removed data set and with the dash dash FST statement or option with Plink. Also, uh, because we have a very neatly organized file with the two reads, then, uh, well, we can use the dash dash family option. So basically it compares the two reads uh, together and uh, gives us results that we are looking for. So that is the FST between the two reads for each SNP. So this is after the running the FST uh, computations. So you see that the mean FST between the two breeds is about uh, 0.9 and uh, there is a also a weighted estimate is about what well, quite similar 0.10. But of course, what we want to see is, uh, well, the summary data is also, summary result is also nice. Well, the SNP wise visualization is even nicer. So we actually load the data into R. Now in this case, uh, some of the lines have an NA value. So we need to drop those. So before plotting, let's actually look at the data. So you see it's about, it is chromosome, SNP, name and position, but most importantly, the FST values. Now, if you know that FST values are range between zero and one, when zero means that there is absolutely no difference between the two populations and the FST equal one means that the two populations are fixed for entirely different uh, SNPs. So for example, one is fixed for AA, all homozygous, and the other is being fixed for BB, all homozygous. And then there is a range in between. Now, technically negative values should not appear, but uh, mostly, uh, well, I, I suppose because of the numerical precision issues, some very small uh, negative values appear in this uh, Plink output, but these are essentially zero values. So, and then uh, we go for the visualization with this very nice uh, function called Manhattan. So here is the output where we see that, uh, well, most of these SNPs are pretty similar between the, the two breeds, but indeed there are some signals with a very high FST markers that potentially show the differences in the genetic makeup between the two populations and could, could be used, for example, also as uh, selection signatures. What we will not do in this video to follow up further on, and for example, this seems to be a quite uh, interesting signal, but probably there are some interesting genes also in the region, but for now uh, we will cut it here and uh, we are basically just uh, provide the tool for getting at FST analysis done with Plink. Now back here for this uh, first part and this small challenge I, I mentioned to you. So basically uh, this script also could be improved because right now if you want to try out some different breeds, what you want also what you need to do is go to the breed one and breed two.txt and rewrite those ones, save those files and uh, well, rerun this whole script. What you can do to improve is that uh, you basically say that the breed one and the uh, breed two are variables in R. So you can actually change them. And uh, what you can write or what is the part of the challenge is to write two lines here that write out this variable without the quotation mark into the breed dot, breed one dot txt a file and the other one is to read2.txt file. With this, then what you can do is uh, just change the family files here or the family abbreviations here, and then you can rerun the whole script and then you can get the FST values or FST comparisons for any two breeds you want. And basically you would just quicken the procedure by a great deal. Because one thing, if you if you notice, so basically the, the only variables that change in this whole process are the actual breed names. Other than that, all the other, other names and other file names are kind of generic. 
So you could use and, uh, I don't know, compare Borgots to Gomez or, or whatever else you, you want. So well, my small challenge to you is to try to write these two lines. Of course, uh, also just not to take away the joy of discovery from, from others. So uh, I welcome the feedback on completion in the comments for this video, but please do not place the solution there because uh, well, just so the others can also well, play around a bit and find, find it out on their own. So this was it for the FSD computations. Uh, but, uh, well, there is a follow-up to this because in the quality control you might have noticed that there was a note saying no control for minority frequency and, uh, well, you need to be careful with the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium uh, controls when it comes to quality control. If you are by chance not careful, uh, then uh, you might uh, end up with a very significantly different outcome than you, you, than you might uh, expect or what you want really. And uh, this will be discussed in the follow-up video that is, well, it will be linked also now. It should appear also above my head and also it will be linked at the end of this video so you can follow up and see what dangers you can encounter when it comes to, well, just FST computations. For now, however, I thank you for your time and, uh, well, we see each other at uh, some other video. So, have a nice day.